Missile tech funded by U.S. taxpayers transferred to China. A new report giving details. Are Thanksgiving candy safe? Lethal fentanyl found disguised inside snacks, seized by U.S. officials. Beijing officials vowing to boost the fighting spirit of Chinese diplomacy alongside the regime's National Congress meeting. An attack inside the Chinese consulate in Manchester. The Chinese consul general admits to pulling a protester's hair during the incident, calling it his duty as a diplomat. And Australia launching an investigation after reports that its former military pilots are getting recruited by Beijing. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Not much says shooting yourself in the foot like transferring U.S. technology to boost China's hypersonic missile program. But that's exactly what's happening, according to a Washington Post report earlier this week. Here's more. Chinese missile groups are buying a suite of American technology that can be used for military hypersonics, including products subsidized by U.S. taxpayers. The report found over 300 sales of advanced software products since 2019. They came from nearly 50 U.S. firms and were sent to Chinese missile groups. Many of the firms that developed these products received millions of dollars in grants from the Pentagon. A Chinese scientist told the Post that the American technology is superior in hypersonics, saying China can't do certain things without foreign technology. U.S. export controls ban any sales of American products to China that can be used for developing missile technology. But companies are finding their way around U.S. export bans by selling to private Chinese middleman firms that claim the tech is for civilian use. According to the Post, two of the U.S. firms, Zona Technology and Metacomp Technologies, sold software to the Chinese Academy of Aerospace Aerodynamics, or CAAA. Zona's chief executive said he had no knowledge of the sale directly to CAAA. He said that in the past, Zona had sold the software to a Beijing-based military technology supplier that resold it to CAAA. CAAA had played a key role in designing China's 2021 hypersonic missile test, and both the U.S. companies are also beneficiaries of the Pentagon's Small Business Innovation Research Grant Program. The Post says the acquired commercial software and results of decades of research will save the Chinese military a great deal of time and resources as it strives to outpace the United States. U.S. export bans on microchips are unsettling both Chinese companies and Beijing. Bloomberg reports that over the past week, China's telecom regulators recently convened a series of emergency meetings with top players in the semiconductor sector. That's to assess the damage and provide support. Earlier this month, the U.S. Commerce Department unveiled sweeping regulations aimed at slowing Beijing's technological and military advances. The curb includes sales restrictions on certain advanced chips to China. The U.S. also added 31 organizations to its unverified list, a trade blacklist, including Yangtze Memory and Nora. The designation will severely limit their ability to buy hardware from abroad. According to the Bloomberg report, many of the meeting's participants argued that the U.S. curbs spell doom for their industry, as well as Beijing's science and technology ambitions. Some American companies will also face impacts. U.S. firm Lam Research says its revenue could halve in China, a market that yields roughly 30 percent of its overall business. The report says it's unclear how Beijing will respond to the new restrictions. But experts predict more state-led spending and intervention from Beijing to counter the U.S. measures. Halloween and Thanksgiving are around the corner, but are candies and other sweet treats safe? Officials recently seized lethal fentanyl pills disguised as candy and snacks inside the U.S. Here are the details. Thousands of suspected fentanyl pills were seized at LAX, Los Angeles International Airport, on Wednesday. 
Authorities say someone tried to go through the airport's security screening with an estimated 12,000 fentanyl pills disguised as bags of candy and snacks. That person fled, but the investigation is still ongoing. The DEA says fentanyl is the deadliest drug threat facing the United States. In 2021, a record number of Americans died from drug poisoning or overdose. China is the primary source of fentanyl trafficked into the United States. Most fentanyl precursors originate from China, mainly from the city of Wuhan. The precursors are sent to Mexico to produce fentanyl. Then Mexican cartels move the drugs across the U.S. border. Fentanyl is widely seen by experts as part of China's unrestricted warfare tactics. Chinese officials are boosting the so-called fighting spirit of the country's diplomacy. The leadership of the party is the foundation and soul of Chinese diplomacy. Daring to fight is the spiritual character of Chinese diplomacy. China's vice foreign minister added on Thursday that Beijing would seek to improve its ability to fight. In recent years, the Chinese communist regime has been increasingly applying an aggressive and confrontational approach toward diplomacy. It often features using harsh language to address other countries. It's been dubbed China's wolf warrior style. Included are Beijing's threats toward Taiwan. Chinese Communist Party leader Xi Jinping recently reiterated the regime's dedication to taking over the democratically ruled island by force if necessary. The communist regime describes this as reunification, although the CCP has never ruled the island. Now we turn to China's economy, almost a trillion dollar deficit. This is the gap between the spending and the income of Chinese provinces in the first eight months of this year. The figure marks the widest disparity in the last 10 years. And it not only reduces local authorities' ability to fund infrastructure projects, but also raises risk for the world's second largest economy as a whole. The data comes at an already trying time, with the global economy wobbling under recession risks and tensions between the West and China rising. Inside China, Communist Party leaders are also still vowing to keep strict COVID-19-driven lockdowns in place. The strict measures often lead to factory closures, business shutdowns, and residents being confined to their homes. On top of that, additional spending to contain virus outbreaks has strained local finances. Local branches of government under the Chinese Communist Party have long been a pump primer for China's growth. At that level, two major money-making sectors are in play. The first is land sales. In China, all land belongs to the country, i.e. to the Chinese Communist Party, which rules the country. Unlike in other nations, when people buy land in China, they don't actually own the land. They're simply purchasing the right to use it for a certain number of years. As the sole landowners in China, authorities of different levels benefit hugely from selling land. The second sector at play is real estate. But property sales have been slowing down in recent years, as heavily indebted real estate companies scramble to restore their financial health. In the past, deficits on the local level were largely offset by the Central Communist Party and surplus from previous years. But analysts say cooling economic growth may limit such help this time around. To counter that financial pressure, some provinces are laying off state workers. Some have also shifted the burden to citizens, imposing high fines on small businesses. According to Chinese media outlet Yisai, local government's revenue from fines and confiscations jumped more than 10 percent in the first seven months, compared to last year. Brain drain is happening in Hong Kong. More talents are leaving the international financial hub now than in recent years. The shift appears driven by a clampdown on political dissent and other freedoms in the city especially after Chinese authorities imposed a tough national security law on the city in 2019. On top of that, strict COVID-19 restrictions for entering Hong Kong remain in place. The result? The city's workforce has shrunk by about 140,000 people over the last two years. This according to what Hong Kong Chief Executive John Lee said Wednesday. To counter the trend, Lee unveiled a new visa plan to attract global talent. The so-called Top Talent Pass scheme will allow those earning more than $318,000 a year to work in the city for two years. The plan also allows graduates from the world's top universities to pursue opportunities in Hong Kong. 
Britain has warned that diplomatic consequences will follow for certain Chinese officials. That's if Beijing fails to waive immunity for any officials charged with assaulting a protester at the Chinese consulate in Manchester. MPs or lawmakers pressed the government to go further, but the Chinese consulate denies dragging the protester inside the grounds. Uh, Mr. Speaker, no. Foreign Office Minister Jesse Norman told MPs that the Chinese ambassador has been summoned over the incident that a Hong Kong pro-democracy campaigner was dragged into the grounds of the Chinese consulate in Manchester and beaten. We have made it absolutely clear to the Chinese embassy that the apparent behaviour of consulate general officials during the incident, as it appears from the footage, which even now more of which is coming out as we uh, discuss this, is completely unacceptable. Greater Manchester Police have started an investigation and said it's a complex and sensitive inquiry and may take some time. Norman said the Foreign Secretary will wait for the result of the independent police investigation. And let me be clear that if the police determine that there are grounds to charge any officials, we would expect the Chinese consulate to waive immunity for those officials. If they do not, then diplomatic consequences will follow. Conservative former leader Sir Ian Duncan Smith used an urgent question in the House of Commons to ask about the role of the Chinese Consul General, Zhang Xiyuan. Zhang admitted to Sky News that he had pulled the hair of the protester and said it was his duty because the protester had insulted his country and his leader. But I now urge the government to be much, much clearer than just using diplomatic language. I urge the government to make it clear in the light of this new evidence that it's not just unacceptable that any consulate individual should have taken part in anything like this, but that any consulate individual who has proved to have been one of the perpetrators of this outrageous and violent attack on Mr Chen will be made persona non grata immediately and sent back to China. The attacked Hong Kong protester spoke at a press conference in central London on Wednesday. Bob Chang said he and others were holding a peaceful anti-government protest outside the consulate on Sunday when masked men came out, tore down the protester's banners and dragged him inside the building's gates. Because I was near the gates, they pulled me inside. Police tried to pull me back out but didn't succeed. So in the end, I was pulled inside and was beaten up. Chang said consulate staff beat his eye in the corner of his left eye was swollen. His head and back still hurts. The worst part is his spine and there are some internal injuries. He had to be rescued by a police officer who would not normally be allowed on consulate grounds without permission due to fears for his safety. I believe the UK is a very safe place with freedom of speech. That cost staff can so brazenly pull someone inside and beat them up in broad daylight is unimaginable. It's shocking that this should happen. Chang said he fears for his family's safety and said he will be silenced, but he's committed to helping with the investigation. The Chinese consulate in Manchester claimed in the letter to police that protesters had stormed the compound and members of staff had been injured. Zhang, the consul general, claiming Chang was dragged into the ground because he would not let go of a staff member's neck. The European Union is witnessing an acceleration of tensions with China. That's what the head of the EU said Friday at a summit in Brussels. The bloc's 27 countries are set to reduce dependency on China. Here's more. It was very clear from uh, the Congress that we've seen um, that President Xi is continuing to reinforcing the very assertive and self-reliant course China has taken. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen added that China is continuing a mission to establish its dominance in East Asia and its influence globally. She also noted leaders of the EU countries agreed to reduce their economic dependency on China. The priorities here are to reinforce our own capacities and of course also to diversify the supply of raw materials towards reliable trustworthy suppliers. On the other hand, European Council President Charles Michel rejected the idea of systematic confrontation with China. He suggested China and the EU must work together on issues like health and climate. 
Right now, the EU regards China as a partner, economic competitor, and systemic rival. But the term rival doesn't depict the lowest possible relationship. Experts say there are still two levels below it. Adversary, or a nation one looks to defeat, and enemy, a nation one wants to eliminate, like via a physical war. Australia appears to be taking aim at Beijing. It launched a probe on Wednesday into what the defense minister called disturbing reports that China is hiring ex-Australian Air Force pilots to train the Chinese military. This comes after the BBC reported that the Chinese regime allegedly recruited up to 30 former UK military pilots to train its air force. Australian lawmaker Andrew Hastie told Sky News that a source has confirmed two former Australian fighter pilots were approached to train China's armed forces. Two former Australian fighter pilots had been approached by the people who run the program but had declined to participate. The UK had earlier announced it would take decisive steps to stop Beijing from headhunting former British pilots. In the first half of our interview earlier this week with Nick Eptimiadis, retired senior U.S. intelligence officer, we discussed how the Chinese Communist Party may be targeting the U.S. midterm elections. That comes as the FBI sends out a warning to Democrats and Republicans. It's over Chinese hackers searching for computer system vulnerabilities inside the party's headquarters. But Beijing's infiltration stretches beyond that. And Eftimiadis says it's even leading to the self-censorship of Americans. And so, Nick, what are the effects of that? What does that mean for, say, our daily life in America? The way China manages this is, um, you know, they, they, they try and restrict any um, discussion, any negative view on the party. Okay, specifically on the CCP. So that means in the case of the manager of the Houston Rockets, you're not going to express any freedom. There is no freedom of speech or freedom of expression. You cannot do that because you will offend China. For any business person dealing with China, you have to play by China's rules. So your liberty, your freedom, as you've known them as an American or in liberal democratic societies globally, is restricted. And it's being restricted by China. So as an academician, or as a, in think tanks, you're not free to do the work you want to do. You're not free to, to present the results and the honest academic results of studies and reports. Because if you do, and they reflect negatively on China, China cuts access for that person. So China can't, you know, they, they can't get any information, go to China, travel, interview people, etc. China will cut access. Same way they'll cut business deals for business persons. Same way they'll cut Hollywood from, you know, showing films in the world's largest market in China, if there's anything that they find offensive. So one loses the freedom, and it's and it's often imposed form of self censorship. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than a year. Here's what to look out for in our second half. What are the U.S. and its citizens doing to counter the Chinese communist regime? We hear more from Nick Eftimiadis, retired senior U.S. intelligence officer, for details. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow. Shen Yun Creations, the streaming platform from Shen Yun, featuring world class dance, past programs, and all original music. Master classes, behind the scenes, comedy, and more. Explore Shenyuncreations.com